The Biotech Project presents Bacteria Forming Biofilms in Your Environment Biofilms form when planktonic or single bacterial cells bind to surfaces and begin to adhere and replicate in place. The bacteria then begin to bind to each other, forming a complex structure. A protective matrix forms around these bacteria, making the environment more attractive to the other bacterial cells. As the population of bacteria within the biofilm increases, a cell can share its genetic material with surrounding cells. This provides for a diverse population of bacteria and increases the chances of an antibiotic resistant strain of bacteria that can cause many problems for us as humans. Although a harmless example includes a biofilm formed on a slimy rock at the bottom of a lake, great danger comes when these types of bacterial relationships are introduced to a human host. Biofilms tend to form on artificial surfaces, such as vertebral implants, and can cause many complications for people who have undergone surgery. Biofilms can break apart or burst, releasing bacteria into the bloodstream, which can lead to more dangerous infections. This experiment makes an effort to learn what biofilms are, how they grow, and how we can quantify their growth over a period of time. We are able to answer these questions based on the relationship of the extracellular polymeric substance that biofilms are made of binding to a dye called crystal violet. The source of bacteria will come from a sample of pond water. To start your experiment, you will add 25 milliliters of pond water and 25 milliliters of LB broth to a sterile 100 millimeter petri dish. You will use a new dish for each day of sampling. Each petri dish should be labeled by date. Four cover slips should be added to each petri dish with sterile forceps. Make sure they are completely covered by liquid and that they are not overlapping. Take care when picking up cover slips with forceps. They are easy to break and drop. On the first day of data collection, make sure to maintain the orientation of each cover slip. The side that was facing upward of the petri dish should always face upward. Remove each cover slip with sterile forceps. Wash each side of the cover slip with a solution of 1 times PBS. Dabbing the excess liquid onto a Kim wipe, wash again after repositioning the forceps to make sure the entire surface of the cover slip is washed. Place each cover slip into its own labeled 60 mm petri dish. Let the cover slips dry in an incubator set to 60 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, with the lids slightly ajar. After 15 minutes have passed, be sure that the cover slips are completely dry. If they're not, allow them to dry until they are. Add 2 milliliters of crystal violet solution to each dish. Incubate cover slip in crystal violet for 15 minutes. Crystal violet should not be disposed of in a sink. Instead, pour used crystal violet into a designated waste container. Remove the cover slip with forceps and wash with 1x PBS just as before. However, this time, the runoff should be draining into your crystal violet waste container. Again, orientation should remain the same. Transfer each cover slip to a labeled 35mm petri dish. Let dry for 15 minutes, again in an incubator set to 60 degrees Celsius with the lid slightly ajar. Once dry, add 1 milliliter of 95% ethanol to each petri dish. Incubate, shaking gently for 15 minutes. Once 15 minutes have passed, pipette 1 milliliter of each sample into its own cuvette. Measure the absorption on a spectrophotometer set to 590 nanometers. Alternatively, you can store samples in a labeled Eppendorf tube and measure absorbance later. 
record the findings of each day in either a lab notebook or an Excel spreadsheet. Store samples in labeled Eppendorf tubes. Repeat this protocol over a course of time set up in your experimental design. Once all of the data have been collected, each day's growth and amount of biofilm formation can be determined. What do these results tell us about how biofilms grow and attach to artificial surfaces?